All right, good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise you, Lord. We worship you, God. Good morning. Good morning, Linda Davis. Oh, that's one of my one of my favorite followers right there. Not followers, so that'll get me into trouble. Uh, my beautiful wife. Good morning. Good morning to you all. I hope you're doing well on a... Thank you so much for the hearts. We appreciate those coming early on a Saturday morning. You got to love it. A chilly Saturday morning in Georgia. Um, thank you so much. My name is Niles Davis. Uh, just a man that loves the Lord. Just a man that loves the Lord simply and plainly. Um, part of Elijah's Altar Ministries here in Loganville, Georgia. Uh, we meet every Thursday night for prayer. And then we have special guests, special minister, uh, you know, get together with ministers and ministries, churches in the area, um, in the Georgia area, uh, really throughout the Southeast, um, and just lift up the name of the Lord. And then we have special meetings uh, throughout the throughout the year. This month, at the end of the month, January. Hey, what's up, brother Chuck? Good to see you, man. Good to see you on here. Appreciate you logging on with us. Um, hope you're doing well, you and Cherie. Uh, we look forward to getting together with you guys soon for sure. Uh, but January 29th through 31st, Ryan Lestrange, Joe, uh, Jojo Dawson, and Jennifer LeClaire are going to be with us. We hope you can be with us for those special services and uh, uh, teaching seminars where we get together. And the Lord is just going to do great and mighty things in Loganville and then all throughout, uh, all throughout this country, I believe. Ready to get together. Absolutely. Uh, today, as we are on day six, uh, of our fast. I'm just going to share a little bit about fasting that breaks the yoke. We're in the midst of a 21-day fast uh, where we are uh, fasting and just giving the Lord 2016, really dedicating it um, as we do at the beginning of every year, get before Him and just allow Him to break the things off of our, of our lives that do not, uh, that do not uh, clearly show His glory in our lives, that do not uh, bring him glory that do not bring him praise, things that do not line up with him, his character, or his word. So again, like I said, day six, today is fasting. Hey, good morning, Sister Jenny. Good to see you. Um, we love you guys out in Gainesville. Fasting that breaks the yoke. And as I always do, I'm going to start out with Isaiah chapter 58, one of the one of the greatest chapters on fasting, and one of my favorites that we're going to get into uh, a little bit at the beginning of this. So, uh, I started yesterday with the beginning of chapter nine, I'm sorry, chapter 58, verse nine. Uh, and that, that part talks about uh, when we fast uh, that the Lord will answer. He will say, here I am, which is powerful. I love that. Um, in verse, let me see, in the second part of uh, verse nine, if, the, if you would, let me just say this, guys, I forgot to say this. If you would share with uh, with friends, with followers, with Facebook friends, uh, followers on Twitter, uh, any type of social media, just to get the word out there about the power of fasting in the life of a believer, um, where a lot of teaching and a lot of uh, preaching about it has gone away, I believe it would be a blessing to people in Jesus' name. Hey, Brother Carl, so glad you're on with us as well. Love you guys. So, like I said, Isaiah chapter 58 Verse nine, the second part of that says, if you take away the yoke from your midst, and that is what I am going to key in on uh, throughout this teaching this morning. If you uh, will take away the yoke from your midst, God says, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. And we'll get to that. We'll get to the rest of, of the result of that um, within the next couple of days. But I just want to key in on that word yoke. In verse six, it also talks about um, it also talks about the yoke. It also talks about fasting, breaking every yoke that we are associated with. Uh, yoke here in uh, verse 9, uh, it, it, it simply means a bar of wood. If we're just talking about the literal uh, Webster's definition, it means a bar of wood that unites two animals that enables them to work. Uh, the word yoke uh, uh, in Hebrew is the word zugos, and it unites two elements to work as one unit. It creates a balance. And if we search the scriptures throughout the Bible, it's used several times. I believe it's used about uh, 260 times, if I'm not mistaken. But it's used as a symbol of servanthood. In Leviticus uh, chapter 26 and 13, uh, it speaks of 
breaking the bars of yoke to walk with our heads high. So breaking away from a yoke uh, that we are enabled to walk with our heads held high at the end of it. Also in Jeremiah chapter 27, verses 8 through 12, uh, it speaks of servanthood. Uh, it speaks of oppression, yoke does, in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 4. Uh, in Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 14, it speaks of bondage to sin. It says, my sins have been bound into a yoke. So yoke several times uh, has to do with being yoked to something that is um, that is going to drive us one way or another, or another, either in a positive direction or a negative direction. It's really our choice um, in that way, which, which way we're actually going to go. Um, in Matthew chapter 11... Going on to the New Testament, in Matthew chapter 11, uh, verses 28 through 30, uh, Jesus is speaking about true rest. He's speaking to the people of God about true rest. And in verse 28, he says, come to me. We, we know this verse, but I believe it's going to speak to us in a special way this morning. Uh, verse 28 says, come to me, Jesus does, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And when we talk about fasting, that's not necessarily one of the verses that I think of. But when we do, as I've been studying this, the Lord has really been just revealing some, some scriptures that uh, I didn't necessarily see as relating to fasting in the past that absolutely have to do with the significance and power of fasting in the life of a believer. So in verse 28 through 30, uh, Jesus is speaking to the people. Uh, he's speaking to the people and he, and he says to them that if you don't have rest, if you don't have peace in your life, um, that you are to come to my yoke. So in the past, we saw um, when it is related to uh, oppression, when it's related to bondage of sin, those types of things, those are obviously negative. Um, Jesus turns it around and says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is something that is a good thing. This is something he wants us to, to draw us to in our own lives. So Jesus's yoke is the opposite from the literal yoke, which, absolute, which actually unites things that are um, unites things that are tying us to things that at times could be negative, um, and he's actually saying this is going to be the opposite of sin. Sin uh, would love to easily entangle us, as the as the Bible says. Uh, sin uh, absolutely yokes us. When we are yoked to sin, we go. We're going in the wrong direction. We're absolutely, uh, you know, in a direction leading to something that is not going to bring glory to God in our lives. We're not going to have peace in our lives. We're not going to have the rest in our lives. We're not going to have um, freedom. We're not going to have. Uh, any of the any of the fruits of the spirit, that joy that comes from the Lord, that gives us strength. We're not going to have that when it's sin, uh, in, in, the when we're yoked to sin. And I'm not just talking about adultery, um, cheating, lying, stealing, murder. I'm not talking about any of those things. Sin literally means, if you know, it means missing the mark. So if you think about a big bullseye right now, maybe some of you guys have. Uh, darts in your a dart board in your house and you have a target you know that, that center that central point is where God would have us to shoot and absolutely uh, live out our lives in that center point even though it's the smallest even though it may be the toughest to get to that is absolutely the the perfect will of God if you will um, anything outside of that main target is considered sin it's considered not it's considered missing that mark and not making uh, the that central target, uh, the point of our lives. So uh, Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. I want you to be in that central point, even though it is the toughest at times, even though it may seem like it's the hardest and it may seem like people are against you, um, and, and it may seem that people are blocking you from getting to that central point, uh, it is absolutely where the Lord would have us. So a yoke is two elements coming together and working as one unit. That's why when the Bible says do not, when in the New Testament, uh, it says do not do not unequally your, uh, do not unequally yoke yourself with unbelievers. That is talking about relationships specifically, but it's talking about specific, especially a marriage relationship, a marital relationship. When a man and a woman come together, we are uh, I'm, I've yoked myself to Linda, so there is a balance there between Linda and I. There has to be. 50-50. Now, at times, Linda always reminds me that sometimes 
there, uh, there, there, is an, uh, there is an imbalance where one uh, spouse has to hold up the other spouse. And I believe that that is definitely, uh, that's, that's life. Sometimes uh, one is having a rough day and the other has to lift them up. But when uh, a man and a woman come together, they are yoking themselves together uh, with the other person. So all of the positives, the fact that they are um, a great worker, the, pa- the fact that they have great work ethic, the fact that they have great character and they uplift people, they are attaching themselves to that. So that's a good thing. But at the same time, they're attaching themselves to the other things. Maybe they get defensive. Maybe they are proud. Uh, and I'll just be honest, things that you know I've had to deal with throughout my life and coming through family issues and things like that, those are things that um, then Linda also has to um, work with me as a as a as a couple and we have to work through those things so we yoke ourselves with the positive but we yoke ourselves with the negative as well and we have to work through those things in order to bring glory to god because we know that the marriage relationship is just a picture of the church and it's a picture of um uh the lord jesus yoking himself to the bride of christ so as i as i have done every day and i'm going to continue to do Today on this teaching, I'm going to focus on one person uh, in Scripture that fasted and then talk about the significance of what they've done. Uh, in the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, we, we know that the prophet Elijah is all over that book. We know that he, uh, he goes throughout and he is uh, doing many exploits. He is working for the Lord and he is... Um, Bringing glory to God, he is definitely one of our uh, one of our favorites um, in the Bible, and that is why our ministry is called Elijah's Altar. I believe that Elijah there are, there is a, there are a lot of Elijahs that are stepping up in this hour, um, literal Elijahs, but uh, the spirit of Elijah is coming forth during this time. So I believe that's a, a powerful prophetic word, uh, and it kind of shows us the times and the seasons that we're in. In, uh, in the world. So like I said, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 8 through 18, Elijah actually fasts for 40 days and 40 nights after fleeing uh, from Jezebel. We know Jezebel is the wicked queen uh, of Israel during that time. She is married to King Ahab. Uh, they are probably some of the most wicked, uh, probably one of the most wicked couples uh, throughout uh, the history of Israel that come to power. Um, Ahab is obviously the king. He's the head of the household, but he is definitely not uh, with withholding his um, his place as the head of the home. He, I believe, has a heart for God at times, but Jezebel is wicked. She uh, goes against the people of God. She at times kills the prophets. Um, in verse eight, uh, we see that. Um, that after uh, after Jezebel kills all the prophets, she forces uh, Elijah out from uh, from the, the the center of that kingdom, and then he eventually is met by an angel that says, "Arise and eat." He is scared. He is nervous. He is on the run. He fears for his life at this point, and he is just trying to get away from this wicked queen Jezebel, who is trying to come after his life. In verse ten. Uh, the angel comes to him and says, where are you? What are you doing, Elijah? And he says, I've been very zealous for the Lord of hosts, uh, which means the God of armies uh, of heaven. It says, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. And then again, uh, in verse 14, if we go past that, uh, the angel comes to the angel comes to Elijah again and says, what are you doing, Elijah? And he says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. He is so hungry for God and he wants uh, the God of armies to actually uh, act on his behalf at that point, And he is just hurting with the heart of God. He says, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. He feels the pain. He feels the, uh, the, the, the feelings that the Lord must be feeling at this point. Uh, feelings of hurt, feelings of pain, feelings of, uh, you know, that, that he has been uh, cheated on in, an, uh, in a spiritual sense. So then if we go to, let me get to 1 Kings, there we go. All right, 1 Kings chapter 19. If we go to uh, verses 15 through 18, after Elijah fasts, after Elijah seeks the Lord, after he is hungry for him uh, and seeks his face in a time where uh, the nation of Israel uh, is picking the gods of Baal, uh, and we know in 1 Kings 18, 
we see that the people of God are silent. Uh, they do not want to go. Al- they don't want to side themselves with the Lord. They just want to kind of. They just kind of want to stand in the middle and and act on that fence between the God of ba- the gods of Baal, the false prophets, uh, the false idols, and then the God of Israel. So we know that they are uh, lackadaisical. They're compromising, and that, in a lot of ways, is a picture, my friends, of and you know this. A lot of you, the, it's a picture of where we are in America. It's where we are in the world in terms of uh, people's faith in Christ. It's where the church sits. A lot of the times, we don't necessarily. There are a lot of people who don't want to make a decision. Well, they're they're gung ho and they are Christian uh, in terms of their values. When it comes to abortion, they are uh, they are gung ho when it comes to abortion in terms of their personal lives. But then they will actually yoke themselves with political leaders who believe something that is the complete opposite. Uh, we can't. We've all heard uh, that actions speak louder than words. It's simple. It's true. But I want to encourage you as a believer: make sure that you are yoking yourselves with the Spirit of God. Make sure you are yoking yourselves and you are aligning yourselves with the Spirit of God and not the Spirit of man. We have to make sure that we are uh, locking arms with uh, the Spirit of the Lord during this time, during this crucial season that we are in. Uh, As we begin 2016, let's fast and pray and make sure that we, just as Elijah, are showing the Lord where our hearts are, that we are torn up for the fact that his people have broken covenant time and time again. Um, and finally, after Elijah fasts, after he goes after the Lord, uh, the Lord speaks to him in verse 15 through 18, and he gives uh, Elijah specific directions. He gives Elijah specific directions about what he is supposed to do at this point. And there's three specific, uh, three specific actions that Elijah is actually supposed to do on behalf of the Lord. And this would change the future and set up, or not change, but it would set up the future uh, for God's kingdom. So in verse uh, 15, it says, Then the Lord said to him, said to Elijah, Go return on your way to the wilderness uh, of Damascus. Right, Because we know that we're going to end up in the wilderness one way or the other. We're either going to choose to go into the wilderness like Jesus does in Matthew 4 after he's baptized by John the Baptist, or we're going to be forced into the wilderness. So uh, a lot of times people, when they choose to go in, they have a heart that is after God. They are zealous for the Lord. They want more of God, and they want, just like John the Baptist and Jesus knows, that we have to withdraw from the city and go into the quiet place to receive from the Lord. But then there are other people that are forced into the wilderness because they let pride and arrogance and all of those things, they constantly are in this cycle where they are uh, building up themselves and not building up the Lord in their lives, and that they are forced into the wilderness where they have nothing. So it's a choice, my friends. Do you want to go into the wilderness uh, for intimacy, or do you want to be forced in the wilderness as a consequence? It is your choice this morning. So he says, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Haziel as king over Syria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mahala, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Haziel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. This is so awesome, my friends, because uh, Elijah, after seeking the Lord, okay, we, you might have even read, of, read over this part before where you see the significance of Elijah fasting 40 days. We've always heard Elijah, you know, ran and he was in fear and he was a, uh, and, he, and you may have even heard that he was a coward. He was scared. He was on his own. He ran and he was uh, running to uh, a place where he could find uh, refuge, where he could find uh, relief from uh, Jezebel, who was a wicked queen. But as he does this, as he goes away, he receives three specific instructions about anointing people who are going to do great and mighty things and great and mighty exploits on behalf of the Lord in the future. So Haziel is king over Syria. The next is Jehu. Jehu would kill off the house of Ahab, um, and and truly bring uh, a righteous judgment to his house. Uh, Haziel, like it says in verse 17, it shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Haziel. Haziel uh, was not 
a king over a nation that uh, that worshiped the Lord, but he was working on behalf of the Lord in the future. Whoever escaped his sword, Jehu will kill. Jehu was a righteous man who eventually killed off uh, in judgment the people uh, of Ahab's house that had killed off the Jews in the past, the people that served the Lord. Okay, and it says, whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. So we know that Elijah had already raised up Elisha in his place. Um, he was fathering this man and he was a prophet to this man and giving him uh, wisdom and giving him uh, an experience in the Lord in terms of hearing from the Lord that he would be able to go on into the future and enact. And he says, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. So there's an order, there's a divine order that is happening uh, through this fasting that we see in 1 Kings chapter 19. Finally, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knee have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. And 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 uh, we need more Jehus to partner with the prophets. Absolutely. We absolutely do. And I believe that during this time of fasting, this is when God speaks to his people the clearest. When you move all the food to the side, when you abstain from those things that heavily ensnare us, when you uh, uh, get to the, get those things to the side that would uh, that would bind us, even at times we know that food uh, bind binds us. Maybe not uh, just in the physical sense, but in the literal sense, where we continue to to fill ourselves with these pleasures. And sometimes we eat things, um, and we we don't even realize how much we're eating. And it takes us and it distracts us distracts us from getting closer to the Lord. And in verse 18, I just want to finish with this. Uh, we know that when there, when we fast, we feel as though sometimes we're alone. We feel as if maybe even the Lord is not necessarily speaking to us in a direct way right at the beginning. I want to encourage you that time will come. He will speak to you in a powerful way. He will reveal things to you. Um, that he never has before. I also want to encourage you that if you are a person who maybe you're fasting for the first time, maybe you're going to fast for the first time throughout uh, throughout 2016. Uh, if you feel like you are alone, get together with other believers. And I believe Elijah saw the significance of this. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights in 1 Kings 19. And then eventually we see that as he uh, gets these specific instructions about anointing three men from the Lord, uh, then in verse 18, it says, and I don't think it's any coincidence, it says, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel that have not bowed uh, a knee to Baal, who is the false uh, false idol of that time. Uh, Baal was a uh, an idol god that was prevalent in that area of Israel and the surrounding nations and every mouth that has not kissed him. So there haven't been, uh, there. Ha everyone has not been intimate with that false idol. And Elijah finds that as he fasts. He finds 7,000. I want to encourage you out there. You may feel like you're alone at times uh, wherever you are, whether you're in the United States, whether you are outside the United States, whether you are in uh, a nation maybe that is not even a nation that has any idea about the things of God. Maybe you have uh, you're, you have seen your nation move away from the things of God. I know in America we have seen uh, what seems like a total shift in the hearts of people. Uh, they've gone away from the heart of to, they've gone away from a heart of God to a heart that is after the things of men. Uh, a thing uh, hearts that are going um, after the things of mammon. We know that uh, man cannot serve two masters, cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. But I want to let you know there is intimacy in fasting. And when it says at the end of verse 18, it says every mouth that has not kissed him, it is true that there are people in this hour, and I believe there are several of you on here today that I love very much, that our Linda and I and our family love you very much because you have not bowed to Baal, you have not kissed uh, Baal, you have not shown that intimacy and given your, your intimate uh uh, your intimate part of your life over to false gods and false idols, but you have actually uh, yoked yourself with believers. You have yoked yourself with the Spirit of God. You have aligned yourself with the Spirit of God. And when this happens, I believe God is able to receive glory. I believe God is able to absolutely um, show and enhance His kingdom in this hour. Uh, Brother Denver, we can. I, I will definitely. Um, I will definitely get this on YouTube. Uh, there are a lot of ways that the Lord uh, spoke through this that 
I didn't even see happening when I, you know, when I was preparing for this. So I, I'm thankful that it was a blessing. Um, I'm thankful that uh, that God is moving uh, in a great and mighty way in 2016. His people are growing. His people are moving. Let's just continue to uh, seek after intimate, um, intimate, intimate time. Of, uh, of of prayer and of fasting and of study of his word during this time uh, and just allow God to do great and mighty things in this hour through us. So I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you, my friends. I pray that he would cause his face to shine upon you. I pray that he would lift up his countenance upon them. I pray that he would be gracious unto you and I pray that he would give you peace. And according to uh, Philippians 4, 7, that he would give you peace that would pass all understanding in Jesus' name. I absolutely will, Carl. Um, give give love to Linda and the kids as well. Tell Bethany and tell um, Elijah Thomas, we love them. Uh, Brother Denver, we love you. Bro uh, Sister Jenny, Brother Chuck, we love you guys. Um, I will absolutely uh, get this on YouTube uh, so that it will be a blessing to as many as possible. Thank you guys for your continued support uh, for our family, uh, for our, our, our ministry all that you have done for us. Thank you so much for being faithful and checking on, logging on with us. Um, so I pray that you have a great day, day six of the fast. Let's continue to go after the Lord. Um, we believe in you all. We believe in you, Brother Denver. We believe in Nadine. We believe in the kids. And we know that it is a kingdom connection. We know that uh, it is a time uh, uh, for God's people to just connect and a time for God's people to stand up, be bold and obedient. That's a word that a brother gave me over Christmas. Be bold and obedient. I just want to speak that over each and every one of you right now. Be bold, be obedient, and let's go and make disciples in all the earth. God bless you. We will see you very soon.